What's going on lads, this is Billy the Kid and today I'm going to show you exactly how I edit my videos in Sony Vegas. Now, you might be asking yourselves, why the hell are we seeing you and not Sony Vegas on the screen? Well, this is one of the most important pieces. Now, I released two other videos before exactly how I, you know, what I, you would have to do to get into YouTube, like what type of equipment you need, you know, what you would have to do with this equipment, and I'll leave them in the description below for you to go and check out. But this has to be one of the most important pieces, a very, very good, high-quality microphone. Nobody wants to hear you talking like this. Nobody wants to hear that shit. And you may be thinking, what the hell is this? And why is it covering up my half my face? Because this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a pop filter. This stops this. Sounds annoying, doesn't it? But with the pop filter, it sounds like I'm on cocaine instead, which is very, very good. But yeah, these are two of the most important things you're going to need. Good quality mic and a pop filter. Now, this microphone is a blue snowball, and um, I'm not going to pan the camera right now, but, you know, I've got a very nice custom mic stand. But when you get the blue snowball, it comes with this, you know, well, to me anyway, a really crappy little tripod that just goes nowhere. And it's so big that, you know, you take up half the damn desktop. So I built, I might actually just put a picture, I don't know. I built this, like, nice little custom made microphone stand. And it actually works pretty well. So now that we got the microphone and the pop filter out of the way, let's go to Sony Vegas and I'll show you my render settings and what exactly I do to edit my videos, shall we? Let's go to Sony Vegas. Okay, so let's assume that you just recorded your gameplay and you just opened up Sony Vegas for the very first time and you have no idea what you're doing. So the first thing we're gonna look at is render settings. Render settings are very important for YouTube, but these are my custom render settings, okay? So the template I've created is a 1280 by 720. I never do 1080, it's just my personal preference. I just like 720 because I have a shitty internet, so I can very rarely actually watch 1080 videos. 720 is no problem. Uh, it's 29.970 uh, FPS, 12A, blah, 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 blah. But here's what we, you can pause the video here, you can take all these down. Width is 12A, height is 720. Field order is lower field first. Pixel aspect ratio is the NTSC DV widescreen. Output rotation original, don't change that, uh, whatever it is. Frame rate is 29.970 NTSC. You have multiple choices there, but that's the one I picked. Uh, because YouTube only renders out in 30 frames anyway. I think it is. Anyway, uh, stereotopic 3D mode is off. Pixel format is 8-bit. Full resolution render quality, blah, blah, blah. Best motion blur, ga Gaussian. I kept on saying Caucasian for some reason, but Gaussian is the one I picked. De-interlace method, blend fields, interlopet fields. See, see how my English is so crappy, but I always just picked blend fields. And then you just click on the start all new projects with these settings, blah, blah, blah. But we're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. You go to audio, stereo, 0, 192, no, 192,000. Bit rate, bit depth, sorry, is 24. And make sure you have that the best. Um, you can set a folder for your commentaries. You know, so that's what I've done. Ruler, nothing in ruler. I don't know. I, I can't remember if I changed anything there, but there you go. Summary, there's not in summary, and audio CD, you forgot all that. So it's just this one, this one. I think it's just that. Those two, the video and the audio. I don't know if anything's changed on the ruler, but anyway, once you have all those taken down, name it something. I named mine custom, you know, custom template. You can name it wherever you want, and then save it. Save it there. Save template. And then you just click on this. Start all new projects with these settings and just hit apply, and that's it. And it'll start when you render out your video, it'll start off with these render settings, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so you set up your render settings. So let's say you recorded your gameplay, you know where its folder is, 
So you go to your folder. So let's go to action and we'll just pick anything. We've got something here. I don't want to pick something too big because I want to know here all day. All right, here's a one minute video. And it's very, very simple. You wait until it's all ordered up before you even do anything. Now, depending on how big the video is, this could take a long time. But since this is only, what, a minute and seven seconds long, it wouldn't take long. So anyway, you've got your video. What do you do now? You see these black bars on the video? Nobody likes them. So the very first thing you do before you do anything else, before you even start cutting the video, splitting the video, editing the video, you right click. You get three tabs here. This is action, so you might get two. This is my video. This is my game audio. This is my microphone audio. So the video audio, you right click anywhere on this blue part of the video. Go to properties at the bottom and you'll be taken here. You uncheck maintain aspect ratio and you uncheck disable resample. We don't want any ghosting in the video. And you click OK and there you go. Now sometimes what I like to do, especially with the PS3 footage, I like to crop a little bit because you will get these little black bars on the side. You, they're, not, they're not visible on PC, but sometimes if you're playing on PS3 you will get some little black bars. So I've set a custom resolution just to crop a little bit. So you can see now, if I undo it, if I can undo it, no, I can't, okay, whatever. But yeah, sometimes you will get those little black bars and you can crop it. Now, you, you know, for custom editing, you can crop it all the way in like that or all the way back up. Really, it really is up to you, but that's what I like to do. Anyway, let me just undo that. All right, I think I undo it, didn't I? There we go. Right. So, before you do anything, that's very important. You have to write that down. Properties, uncheck the maintain aspect ratio, and disable the resample. It's very, very important you do that. So now that you've done that, what do you want to do? Well, there's lots of things you can do. If you're doing a commentary, you need to record your microphone. So this, look, if I just check the video right now. No, I think, yeah, you were there. That was close, but... So that, that was like a, a game, in-game audio. So that was uh, recording my microphone and all that. So let's just delete that. We, If you press U, if you ever want to delete anything, if I press delete right now, it deletes the whole thing. But if, say you wanted to just delete your, your microphone audio. Press U and it un, you know, it deselects it from the video. So now I can delete it without deleting the entire video, right? So let's just say uh, I wanted to record an audio, a, a commentary. Excuse me. How do how what's the best thing to do? A gameplay commentary. First off, you want your gameplay audio very very low. So you go to your audio. This is your audio settings right here. This is your audio tab. This is your volume. Now normally I said to minus ten, ten decibels, minus ten decibels. Now sometimes I even go lower than that. If you hold down Shift and V, you will get this little blue line. This is a um, another volume line basically, and you can even set it to lower. Click on this blue line anywhere, anywhere at all. So I'll click it right here at the beginning of the video. Double click it, and you create this little cube. Drag and hold onto the cube, and drag it all the way down, and it even goes even lower than that. So if we play the video now, it's very, very low. Now that, that could be a little bit, a little bit too low, but it's really up to you. That's why I like to do anyway. I like to add the game volume maybe around there. Maybe minus 10 and just where the blue line is there. So now we've set the game audio very low so our listeners aren't just blown away by the game audio. We want our commentary audio very, very clear. So you have your microphone plugged in, you're ready to go. Create a new, let's just say that that, that wasn't there. Let's just say this is what you have, right? You want to create a new microphone audio tab, right? Right click anywhere in this gray area here. Right click, insert audio track. And there you go, that's all you have to do. Now you're ready to record. You click on this button here, arm for record. And it'll tell you where do you want your recording file to go. And you can select where you set up your folder. So I set mine up in my documents, commentaries. Uh, even if you have that checked, it'll keep on asking, I don't know why. <laughs> 
and right now it's recording it's not recording my voice but it's ready to record it's telling you how high the volume is so I could set mine up all the way so I can blow your mind out you know like that and so we don't want that you want your volume maybe at normal settings at 0.0 .0. you can maybe set it to maybe two but I wouldn't go really far than that maybe three and uh, you can just double click in there and just press three and put in three decibels and once again but as you can see we're getting very very close to the red zone here and we don't want that so if I set it back to zero sometimes it even is better to just set it to maybe minus five but once again you can hold down shift and V to bring up the volume and you can even set it to higher like that to uh, get ready to record but I'm not gonna do that right now so you're ready to record head down here record or you can hold down control R and it will and it will start recording my voice like now and this is how I do my commentaries and when you're done recording your commentary just click on control R or the button down there again and it'll stop recording it really is as simple as that now what I do for my recordings as well is I use a program called audacity audacity is a audio software it's free and say you live in a busy area like a town or a city that has a lot of traffic going right by your house and your microphone is picking up all that traffic and you don't want people listening into cars or fire trucks passing by you want to get rid of everything but your voice all the background noise so let's just say I'll leave audacity in the description below it's free you can go ahead and download it let's just say you want to do that right click on your audio and it'll say open in audio editor or open a copy you want to open a copy in the audio editor now I can't exactly remember how to I think it's you go to settings and you set audacity as your audio editor I think that's how you do it but let's just say we want to do that let's just say you recorded them long 10 minute commentary and there's a lot of background noise and it's very annoying open up audacity now here's where we were recording my little you know intro of my uh, the video right there you hold down control and one you know it, it really is as simple as that control two zooms out control one zooms in so let's just say just for convenience we'll zoom out so that's our like 12 seconds of commentary let's just say you have 10 minutes so you want to get rid of a lot of background noise hold and actually let's, let's zoom in for convenience let's zoom in and we'll select right there right where the anywhere there actually where there's z there, where there's nothing on the track at all there's no noise just hold hold down and stop before the audio starts that's very important anywhere where there's zero audio stop it before the audio starts go up to effect head on down to noise removal select that and get noise profile and then you double click on the audio track select the whole thing just double click it head up to effect noise removal and these are my uh, noise removal settings you should have done that actually before you said get noise profile uh, that's a mistake make sure you set these before you click get noise profile set the noise reduction to 24 put that to 0 put that to 150 and put that to 0 1.5 and click on remove not isolate click at the noise remove so once you've done that and once you get the noise profile select the whole track and just click OK and it'll remove all the background noise in the uh, audio track to the best of its abilities and when you've done that head up to file head up to export <coughs> excuse me head up to export and I've also set up another folder called finished commentaries now you can name your track anything you want name it finish com one right so we click save don't matter anything about that and it'll uh, export now because it was so short it actually did it instantaneously but if it's a 10 minute video or even 20 minute video it might take maybe two minutes depending on how good your computer is to export it so once that's done you can just exit out don't save the changes doesn't matter and we'll just go to our finished commentaries I have it pinned to the yolk there there's our finished com one and it's the exact same audio with just no background noise in your in your commentary now you can delete the other one and you can just drag that one in 
and you can delete that audio track as well. So if we play it, and it will st and it will start recording my voice like now, and that's pretty much all I can do. That's pretty much it. Now, in terms of effects, there are a few things you can do. This is probably a long ass video, but it's necessary if you want to know. Anyway, so there are a couple of effects you can do to put in some color correction. So if I just go on any part of the video that's not on the spawn screen. Any part? Any of them? Okay, right. So here's a good part. There, There is some like effects you can put in, like color corrector. So this one I have PS3 best for HD PVR, but it works for PC as well. So anyone you want. Look, if I green highlight, I can just select it, drag it in. And now our video has a slightly green color, but um, I can just get rid of that like that. I can put in some red like that. This is all basic, but this one I have is uh, best for HD PVR. Now, say you've spliced up your you know video into multiple sections. Like if you press S, it makes a cut, and you can make as many cuts as you want. This could be necessary for a montage or a funny video or anything like that. Let's just say you made a cut, and you know there's other parts of the cut here, 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 blah, blah, blah. If you drag this effect and you put it into right there, into that part of the video, it's not in this part. You can see right here, this little emblem here, event effects. It's green highlighted. So it means there is an there's a effect used in that part of the video. But if we go here, it's not green, which means there's no effect. So if we just click on, you might see a small change right there. Did you notice the change? If I go back a few frames, you can see the very subtle change. And that can be that can be very bad. Now to avoid that, if we just double back, to avoid this, it's very simple. You just drag your effect, and instead of putting it here, you put it on the entire video tab. Like that. And no matter how many cuts you have, it's in the entire video. So right here. We just keep on going, 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 right where we get to the cut. There's no change at all. Why? Because it's in the entire video. Uh, what else is there? Well, you can put in some color corrector. Actually, what do I, isn't there, don't I have like some custom settings? All right, yeah, so for my color corrector, this is for the HD PVR, but it works well on PC as well. Uh, let me see, down here is where everything is. You can pause the video right there and copy them down, but I'm going to move on because this video is dragging on. Uh, what else is there? Color curves. Color curves are also useful if you want to darken or highlight the video. Uh, let me see. But um, color curves are basically, you know, I can darken the video down. I can brighten it up. Really is up to you. Let's not actually put that in. There is a saturation just is what I also like to use, also called HD PVR. And it's a custom one again. You want to put the center at 1, put this at 0 0.144, 1, 0 0.266, 0 0.152, etc., etc. And finally, a little, a little bit of sharpen. Default. Do not put medium, light, or heavy under any circumstances. Well, you can if you want, but I always put in default. Not really necessary for PC footage, as it can make it look very, very, very sharp, and that's not always the best. But for PS3 footage and console footage, this is a must-have, really. Uh, what else could you do? But uh, I think that's all I'm going to cover today, because this video is probably very, very long by now. But if you have any questions, any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below, and I will answer them maybe with another video. Anyway, lads, this is Billy the Kid. I thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you out in any way at all in starting up YouTube videos and how to edit them. I will be doing more if you wish to. And leave it in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, lads. And I'll see you again.